Nameless Democrats try to pack the Supreme Court, but they will absolutely fail. In this video, we're going to take a look at the legislation that's being introduced to add four new seats to the Supreme Court, how such a move would basically end the balance of powers and nullify a republic, and why a growing course of voices recognize that this radical move to end a republic is absolutely doomed to utter failure. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Wonderful to be with you. As always, we're here to give you each and every single day conservative hope in the midst of these turbulent and trying times, helping to think better so you can feel better and provide for you a patriot path to freedom. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, gang, you know, we've all experienced blackouts, that strange, bizarre feeling you get when the power grid goes out, especially at night, and you look at each other and go, what the heck are we going to do now? Well, I'm preparing for my next blackout with a wonderful device called the light bug. The light bug is a portable solar-powered ultra-bright floodlight with three lighting modes. It's uh, solar powered, so you'll never have to worry about wires or batteries. And it comes with a power indicator, so you know just how much charge is left. It's perfect to light up your fishing, hiking, or camping trips because it's so lightweight and portable. I mean, it's really awesome. And if you click on that link below today, you're going to get 15% off your order. So it can be better. Make sure to click on that link below or head on over to lightbug.com and get your emergency backup light today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Um, they're going for it. <laughs> the Dems are going for it. The radical wing of the Democratic Party, which is basically all of it, they're introducing legislation to pack the Supreme Court with as many as four new justices, which would effectively expand the court from nine to 13 judges. Representative Mondaire Jones tweeted the announcement out saying, quote, our democracy is under assault. And the Supreme Court has dealt the sharpest blows to restore power to the people. We must hashtag expand the court. That's why I'm introducing the Judiciary Act of 2021 ad four seats to SCOTUS. What utter and patent nonsense. But we're living in nonsensical times, so it's just par for the course. And it's a par that's being dutifully echoed right on cue by the mainstream media. New York Times and editorial calls what Biden and the Democrats are seeking to do here as merely restoring the balance of the Supreme Court after Trump's term when he packed the court with three radical and extreme right-wing nuts. The leftists are so bitter about the fact that Trump refused to withdraw Brett Kavanaugh's nomination, right? They thought they had that in the bag that with their Me Too bombardment on them, and yet Kavanaugh sailed through confirmation unscathed. And they're still incredibly bitter about Ruth Bader Ginsburg being replaced by Amy Comey Barrett and uh, her the a protege of Antonin Scalia. So the leftist shills over the New York Times are giving the Democrats cover once again by shamelessly promoting far-left political antics under the guise of supposedly responsible journalism. Now, obviously, this move to pack the Supreme Court is, it, the, it alone is enough, this one move. It's enough to forever disqualify the Democrats from ever holding office again. Because what we have here is a blatant, absolutely blatant attempt at removing any semblance of independence in the court and independence that's indispensable to our balance of power. We all know, look, we all know, let's be honest, we all know the court is ideological, right? Judges are not neutral. We know that. Not by any stretch of the imagination are they neutral. The founding fathers, they were all proponents of what's called natural law theory, the natural law tradition. And very simply put, the idea here is that human law is not invented. It's more discovered because human law is supposed to reflect transcendent divine law as it's revealed in nature and accessible to human reason. That's what governed jurisprudence for basically 2,500 years in the Western tradition. The founding fathers were thoroughly aligned with that ideology, as it were. But in the 19th century, as knowledge was being more and more redefined solely around scientific rationalism, natural law assumptions began to wane. And that's because science had supposedly revealed that there is no divine meaning or purpose to the world. It's simply made up of biological, chemical, and causal, physical causal laws. And so in the place of natural law, you saw the emergence of what is in fact its antithesis, and that's what we call legal positivism. Legal positivists argue that all legal norms are mere human fabrications. They don't reflect any transcendent obligation inherent in the created natural order. 
They are rather the invention of populations and nothing more. So legal positivists assume a radical, shall we say, nature-culture dichotomy that would have been alien to our founding fathers. But that's the default legal position of the vast majority of our judiciary today, right? Particularly the liberal ones. So ideological commitments are inescapable. You're either going to be on the side of natural law, as our more conservative judges are, or you're going to be an advocate and practitioner of positivist law, as all of our liberal judges are. So, of course, the court is ideological. But this move by Democrats to pack the court goes infinitely further. What this move is doing is setting the precedent that from this point forward, whoever assumes power, presidential power, he or she has the right to recast the Supreme Court after his or her own image. The Democrats are going to stack the court with four new radical left judges so as to deliberately align the court with their radical ideology. And then when a Republican wins, what do you think the Republican is going to do? When Republicans come to power, what are they going to do? So... We're not going to have a Supreme Court. Not only are we going to have a Supreme Court that conceivably could have 101 judges at some point, but now the Supreme Court is just rubber stamping the political agenda of any political power, which begs the question, what the hell do you need a Supreme Court for? <laughs> if the new standard is to just automatically align the Supreme Court to the image of the political party in power, then why not just have a new judicial commission set up that will enact the will of the party? Why the hell do you need a Supreme Court? There's no point since it blatantly ceases to be an independent branch of government. There's just no point to it. What the Democrats are proposing here is nothing short of the end of our constitutional republic, period. It's the end of checks and balances. It's the end of any semblance of an independent judiciary. And so the Democrats are deliberately trying to institute, when all said and done, a banana republic where the Supreme Court would be replaced by a radically partisan kangaroo court. And everyone knows it. This is why the whole idea is so unpopular, even among Democrats. The inconvenient truth is that more and more Democrats, particularly Democrat senators, are lining up against this latest attempt at court packing. But before we get into that, make sure to click on the link below and register for our upcoming new conservative Patriot Live benefit conference, which we're holding this week and starting tomorrow, April 16th and 17th. It's a virtual conference. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. You can secure your seat, literally your couch, simply by clicking on the link below. We're going to be focusing on how you and I can together rise up against woke cancel culture and build back the world that we know and love together. We're going to be answering a question that patriots have been asking for months now. What do I do? Right? Many of us believe that things are moving in our direction. We know liberalism is more unpopular than ever. We know patriot movements and leaders are springing up all over the world. But in the meantime, what do we do? With bumbling Biden in the office, what do we do? We're going to devote an entire two-day conference to answering precisely that question. And what you and I can do to secure our freedom from woke insanity once and for all. Now, tickets are going fast. Seating is limited. So if you want to secure your seat... Make sure to click on that link below because ticket price is going to go up right before the Patriot Live event tomorrow. So do not miss it. Click on that link below right now and I'll see you for a week. And that promises to be a game changer in our lives like never before. All right, guys. So we're seeing more and more Democrats, particularly like Senator Joe Manchin, or Kirsten Sinema, standing up uh, against this latest radical left insanity. Now, of course, Biden is trying to do something about that. As many of you know, Biden tried to bribe Manchin by giving his wife a very prestigious, very cushy job on the Appalachian Regional Commission. It was an obvious bribe because it was an offer that came right after Manchin said that he was not going to support one of Biden's cabinet appointees. But fortunately, Manchin isn't budging when it comes to these radical Democrat goals and initiatives. He's not budging on uh, reconciliation and the filibuster. Uh, he believes that passing legislation by a simple majority, which is reconciliation in the Senate, uh, that applies only to budgetary bills and very, very strict ones at that, nothing more. He's absolutely standing up for the filibuster, as is Kirsten Cinema, And that includes two bills like H.R. 1 and so-called voting rights legislation. And most importantly, he is not budging 
on resisting packing the Supreme Court. He wants nothing to do with it. And he's not alone. It's been revealed that Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the patron saint of leftist liberals, vehemently opposed court packing. The ultra-liberal justice Stephen Breyer has also voiced his opposition to court packing. And you know who else opposes court packing? Joe Biden, bumbling Biden, last year during the campaign said he was, quote, not a fan of court packing. Even the old decrepit Harry Reid, the former Senate majority leader under Obama, has come out against court packing. He thinks it's, he thinks it's actually foolhardy on the part of the Democrats and that it has the potential of destroying them politically. And that's because the polls have been rather consistent on this over the last couple of years. Upwards of 60% of likely voters oppose packing the Supreme Court with extra judges. They're simply not buying the rhetoric of the Democrats, you know, restoring the balance and all that. Democrats don't have a lot of room to spare here either. I don't know if you're aware of this. But the Democrats right now only have a two-vote margin in the House. Did you know that? That's, I mean, that's how bad it is for them. The Republicans have 212 seats in the House, and the Democrats have 218. Since tie votes fail in the House, that means Democrats can't lose more than two votes from their party to pass legislation the GOP unanimously aligns against it. That's how desperate the Democrats have become. And to add insult to injury, more and more pundits are coming out and saying there is no way that the Democrats are going to be able to even come close to pulling off the uh, packing of the court. The ultra-liberal Washington Post recently ran a piece that argued that Biden's commission that he set up to look into the pros and cons of court packing was nothing more than an admission that the whole venture is hopelessly foiled from the beginning. The Washington Post writer called the commission, check this out, face-saving paralysis by analysis. <laughs> face-saving paralysis by analysis. It's a way for Biden to say, hey, we took action on court packing without actually having done anything. So obviously this is all concerning. It's radically concerning just how radical the Democrats are willing to go to destroy our nation. Would it not be ironic if the Democrats fail to even come close to achieving this court packing? And then in 2022 and 2024, when the Republicans finally take full power back, they move not only to pack the court with another four justices, but then pass legislation that officially sets the limit to 13 judges. <laughs> now that's playing offense. So we'll keep our eyes on how things develop here. But as things look right now, the Democrats are going to be no more successful than Wiley Coyote chasing after the Roadrunner. And they'll be every bit as pathetic and hilarious to watch. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, definitely click on the link below, check out some of our awesome merch, and you'll definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on new details that have emerged about Dante Wright as the mainstream media continues to inflame racial tensions. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.